when I was about 15 years old, uh, went over to a friend's house and our neighbor lady had a little girl about five years old. Her name was Kenna. I said, well, that's kind of close to my name. Then I found out she was dying of a blood disease. So it always stuck in my mind, and it's a very good name for Kenna. Yeah, I was informed when we started dating that he already had the name of his first daughter picked out. But I think he thought it was a moot point because he always gave me the impression that he was far too manly to have daughters. And then Kenna was born. And I remember that there was some shock when they said, it's a girl. And you said, it's a girl? But it was a girl. Well, a little known fact about Connor was that he came out butt first. That's and true. the only thing you can say about that is ever since then he's been walking or marching to his own drummer. Case in point, Chez Elementary School field day. Every parent wants their kid to come home happy with a handful of blue ribbons. And I knew that wasn't going to be the case. So I was ready for a sad guy, but he got off the bus. He had a smile from ear to ear that would just fill a room full of joy. And he, I said, well, what's up? What'd you do? How's it go? He said, I had a great time. I want a ribbon of every color there was to get. In the oh, middle to late 90s, the Capital Journal, the Topeka newspaper, had a, a deal where parents could nominate their, their children for kid of the day. And there was a little blurb that would be stated about them and it would be on the front page of the paper up in the corner. And so both Barrett and Connor, I submitted their names and they were a kid of the day one day. And Connor, it was separate days, and Connor was first. And I sh opened the newspaper and showed him there was this little picture on the front page. And he was so joyful and so excited. And he grabbed that newspaper and he ran down Granger Street with it and knocked on all our neighbors' doors and said, I'm famous, I'm famous, look, I'm a famous kid. Kenna, like, took her blanket, her pink blanket that she's had from day one, and tied it around her neck. She got this, like, cotton candy tube thing and decided that that was a trumpet and deemed herself Kenna the Terrific. And that would be funny enough if it just ended there, but at this point she decided that she was invincible or had super strength or something and like ran into the door. When we were younger we would always go swimming in the pond and we had this huge blow up trampoline. We were pulling it and I don't know what I was doing, but somehow I went under <laughs> and I thought I was gonna die like my life flashed before my eyes because I was like six and I couldn't go under the water to get out and so I was just kind of limp there in the water and Kenna I felt her grab my hand and just yank me out and it was like the angels were singing and it was beautiful <laughs> and she saved my life. So there was this one time when Connor was about seven years old and he was super excited about getting this certain McDonald's Happy Meal toy. And his excitement was so much that he couldn't contain it and opened this side window of our van that we were riding in about yay high and stuck his head out and was looking for the McDonald's. Well, the officer behind our van wasn't too pleased about that and pulled the van over. Um, when Ken and I were little, we would go out to our playhouse and play Harry Potter. And I remember Kenna always got to be Hermione and I was really jealous because she would make me be Hermione's fake little sister named Harriet. <laughs> During camp, we went to this camp together and there's just, we decided to play ping pong, whatever. We're playing ping pong. Um, and within a, like a two, hour, hour and a half frame of time, something happened. Um, I was just playing with a friend and then it became more than that. It was, I wasn't playing with a friend anymore. I was playing with someone I wanted to pursue. So here's, here's the, the gist of it. We were going to get together, watch Lord of the Rings, and by Return of the King, Connor was going to make a move. You want to know his big move? He touched her foot. And not like 
Not like a full, like, fist, a foot, like barely, like, his fingertips, just like barely grazing her foot. That was the whole move. For 18 hours, I sat through Peter Jackson's trilogy for him so he could get an arm around Kenna and he touches her foot. Connor was a senior in high school and he had a very big crush on Kenna, which everybody knew at the time. And Kenna had insisted to everyone that she just was not feeling the same about Connor, which was fine. But her actions spoke very differently. And so how excited we all were when she got to Oregon to take care of her grandma. And we found out that the two of them had been corresponding for quite some time and that when she was coming back, they were officially an item. I I went to go visit her in Oregon. Um, we went to go stay at her grandma's beach house up in Rockway Beach. And <laughs> we, were, we were so crazy. We bought a coconut at the convenience store and decided to make face masks out of them. And it turned out terrible. It was rotten. And so we tried to mix it with milk and it just was terrible. And we microwaved it and it made it even worse. All she wanted to do was get married, and she would show me rings, and it was a pearl ring. It had to be a pearl. It was just this ring online that she fell madly in love with. But then it sold out, and her little heart broke. Past a few months later, I was really, it was really time to start thinking about actually moving things forward. And I had talked to many people, and they all gave me um, the go for it and they were all really happy to hear about it. So the next thing I do is I just um, make plans to get a ring, and then just a few days later, Kenna comes to me so excited. The ring is back. The ring that she was dying for had come back. We were gonna go out on a fancy date for my half birthday. He came to pick me up at the church where, where I was after work, and, and he, um, he said we were gonna go get dessert first at Hazel Hill. Then he took me to the library and let me pick out a movie and I chose Phantom of the Opera. So then we went to Hoo Hot and then we came back to the church and we watched um, Phantom of the Opera on the big screen. After the movie, I was like, oh, such a fun day. That was a lot of fun. And he's like, come on, I've gotta show you something. And so we start walking to the stairs to go back up um, to the main church hallway and and he turns to me right before we go up the stairs and he says, do you feel pretty? I was like, uh, yeah. This handful of girls that Kenna was close to were setting up my, the proposal area. But we hung pictures from the walls and we dangled Christmas lights from the ceilings. What else we we do? set up tea lights oh, yeah. um, and rose petals and this, everywhere. This, this circle um, of lights that Connor was gonna walk Kenna down to and then propose in the circle. And there is music and we turned the lights down mm. low. And, and then he was proposing and then it was on <laughs> Pandora on this really nice station and then all of a sudden in the middle of the proposal there's like a man talking and it was the ad that had come up on Pandora. Did you hear that? And it kind of freaked us all out. It was really funny. Um, yes, and it was a lot of fun because we got to hide behind the doors and watch mm. the whole thing, which mm -hmm. I don't know if we were supposed to do, but we did anyways. Last year in our youth ministry, when we made a series movie that we asked Connor to be the bad guy and we let him come up with his own character and he called himself Baron Von Bad Boy. It was pretty perfect. He wore a, a top hat and maybe some kind of furish suit coat and we had a team of secret agents fighting uh, against him concluding in a rooftop final battle up on top of our building and uh, we had, you know, these five fighting against Connor, and he fended them off, but of course at the end, the good guys have to win. So it culminated with throwing the bad guy off the roof, which with our amazing special effects, we dressed up a life-size Pink Panther doll thing that I had in Connor's clothing and tossed that off the roof, um, which of course, Immediately after we aired this, we had junior hires going to the bushes to see whether Connor was lying dead on the ground. Okay, uh, one of my favorite memories with Connor growing up would uh, have to be our senior year of high school. Um, I was on a double date and uh, it was going south pretty quick. And um, I remember texting Connor and going like, man, 
you gotta help me get out of this. And uh, we came up with a plan, which uh, seemed like a good idea at the time, uh, to have Connor show up at the movie we were gonna go see. And um, little did we know, instead of arriving to a packed theater, um, it was empty. There were like a dozen people. And uh, fortunately for me, uh, that didn't stop Connor. Um, he still came through the d theater doors and uh, shocked my date and her friends and uh, really helped me out. What better way to express the memories I've had with him than reading one of our favorite songs and eating one of our special snacks as I read it. So this is for you, Connor. Drink with me to days gone by, to the life that used to be. At the shrine of friendship, never say die. Let the wine of friendship never run dry. Here's to you, here's to me, away we go, my friend. I'm gonna miss her. <laughs> She's not dying of a blood disease. Oh. Oh. I do want to say one thing. I did have a kinna fund here <laughs> that uh, so we were, she can buy land. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> we could uh, get her married off to Connor. So don't forget about the poor fella. <laughs> Thank you. Can I know that this has been uh, a long and stressful process, but um, know that we are really, really excited for you. Um, that we're excited to be a part of this day. Um, we're excited that it has come. Um, and we, we look forward to what life holds for, for both of you. Congrats.